when we spend time in Japan, we've been there together. We have companies that have 100-year strategic plans. Uh, you know, you know, laugh at that, but they actually have 100-year plans, and they've been operating for some of them hundreds of years. This is a big question. In some serious companies, you might, I mean, you didn't see all 14 companies, but many of the companies that we highlighted uh, have that, you know, sense of uh, long span. They've been around a long time, starting in the American Civil War and, and you know, going up since then. Uh, so I, I think that, that Jim Collins have written about getting uh, from good to great and being durable. So th this, this question of, of, of time is, 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 uh, and, and purpose is, is really uh, quite critical. I think that we have, probably in the 1990s or the late 1980s, more and more, particularly in financial markets, uh, I take some blame for that, it's on them, I guess so. Um, we've given ourselves over to kind of short term almost ideology, right? So we, uh, we have just in time and overnight and everything. Is, and, and it leads to a kind of instant gratification. It has lots of ramifications in the whole culture, but it certainly affects the business mentality, maybe even our definition of leadership. How long are you going to be a leader? You know, just a little bit of short time. As much as you can, you go away. So I think we need to step back from that. And there are some voices. I've collected some of them who are uh, you know, taking a, I mean, a longer term perspective, who are willing to step out. And a lot of companies have given up uh, you know, the guidance. Some bigger companies have given up quarterly guidance. And I think that, that uh, you'll see more of that and uh, more annual reports being written in different ways, longer term perspectives. I'm hopeful about that. Maybe I'm seeing things that are not accurate of the whole market, but I, I think there's some indication. Uh, so. Some of that is wishful thinking, but uh, it, 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 when you're talking about these kinds of virtues or values that are discussions of humanity for all of time, I mean, we are terminal beings, so we're only here a short time, but people have had these discussions for all time. I mean, you really feel like you're stepping into that river, and uh, it's, uh, it's important uh, you know, how we do that and how we encourage that. <laughs> In, in a more global, faster, faster than ever, crazy pace. You know, I'm, I just said I'm going to be in 25 cities in so six weeks. What a nut. Uh, that difficulty with that. So part of the answer, though, I mean, I'd like to you know, hear you guys, because you're, you're in, a, you know, in a place that's really uh, on the forefront of this, is uh, taking time to reflect. Uh, one of the points I've made in an earlier book on I called it uh, perpetual learning, is that there's no such thing as a terminal degree, so that, that we have to continually learn. Even those of us who think we have learned or we're going to learn have to be continually learning. Those who have MBAs, you know, you need to keep, I guess in software we know that, right? We keep getting the, uh, the upgrade. We keep getting the next version. Um, I think we need to do that educationally as well. But uh, I was part of the Aspen Institute, Tina, and I've had a discussion that takes people away in an almost retreat type atmosphere. That's an old fashioned term. It gets very healthy though. I don't mean to go to a monastery and you know, give up living, but to retreat for a week or two and actually put yourself in a different context. Read some of the world's great literature. Have some deeper conversations with people. It opens up a different perspective.